On May 15, 2012, Soyuz TMA-04M launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome for the International Space Station. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Main liftoff. Liftoff confirmed. We can feel it. Everything's okay on board. And as you can see, liftoff of the Soyuz TMA-04M on its way for the crew to join the International Space Station Expedition 31 crew carrying flight engineers Gennady Padanka, Sergey Revin, and Joe Acaba into space. Good uh, first stage performance. Soyuz now delivering 102 tons of thrust for its four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It's burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of the flight. Nominal G load increase. It happens very smoothly and we feel good. A small vibration, other than that, everything's fine. 25 seconds, everything's nominal. Pressure inaudible. Swap everything's okay on board, we feel good. Engineer, everything continuing as planned. Now a minute and 10 seconds into flight, the velocity of the Soyuz rocket is 1,100 miles per hour. Inaudible seconds. Okay, on board is okay. Minute and a half into today's flight now. Everything's still going well. Great view here from uh, the clear skies in Baikonur as the Soyuz makes its way into space. Stage one and two thrusters operate nominally. 100 seconds. Flight is nominal. Copy. Just over two minutes now into the flight, the four strap-on boosters, as you saw there, have been jettisoned. These have completed their job and dropped away at an altitude of 28 statute miles, and the Soyuz now traveling at about 3,350 miles an hour. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz TMA-04M docked to the Poisk module without issue. After the end of the shuttle program, NASA switched priorities for reaching the station from American soil using its own rockets and spacecraft to using private commercial companies. One of those selected for the commercial resupply was the space exploration company known as SpaceX. SpaceX had been making a splash in the spaceflight world with its Falcon rockets. The Falcon 9 promised to lower the cost of orbital activity using potentially reusable boosters and other components. To resupply the ISS, SpaceX created the Dragon cargo vehicle. The Dragon spacecraft consists of a nose cone cap that jettisons after launch, a conventional blunt cone ballistic capsule equipped with 18 Draco thrusters, with an unpressurized cargo carrier trunk equipped with two solar arrays. The vehicle is designed to be reused, so it includes a heat shield to protect it during re-entry and parachutes to allow for a survivable landing. The commercial resupply Dragon capsule can transport 3,310 kilograms of cargo, which can be all pressurized, all unpressurized, or anywhere in between. It can return to Earth with the same amount of all unpressurized, or up to 2,500 kilograms of pressurized cargo, based mainly on parachute limitations. Initially, the objectives of the C2 Plus mission were to have been accomplished by two separate missions. 
Dragon C-2 would have carried out a flyby of the ISS, practiced rendezvous maneuvers and communications with the station, before returning back to Earth. A second mission, C-3, would have been the first mission to berth with the station. In July 2011, NASA gave tentative approval to combine the objectives of the two missions. And in December, NASA formally approved the merger of the missions into the Dragon C-2 Plus flight. On May 22, 2012, a Falcon 9 booster launched the Dragon vehicle towards the International Space Station. We have liftoff at the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Starting pitch kick. Starting gravity turn. First stage engine at full power, looking good. We have a solid telemetry link and the power systems are normal. Once in orbit, Dragon spent several days performing a series of maneuvers, testing its ability to conduct abort procedures and on-orbit positioning, tracking, and rendezvous with the station. After several more maneuvers to test various components of Dragon, Expedition 31 crew member Don Petit from inside the cupola model used the station's Canadarm2 to reach out and grapple the Dragon. Petit, with the help of fellow crew member Andre Kuypers, guided and then birthed Dragon to the Harmony module's Earth-facing common birthing mechanism. On flight day 5, after evaluating air quality inside Dragon, the crew opened the hatch between the Dragon and the station. They wore protective goggles and breathing masks they performed further tests to make sure the atmosphere inside the capsule was safe, which it was. And Patet noted that it smells like the inside of a brand new car. Dragon spent approximately six days berthed to the space station, allowing astronauts time to unload its cargo, and on the final day at the station, May 31st, the crew unberthed Dragon from Harmony using the Canada Arm 2. Dragon then performed a series of engine burns that placed it on a trajectory to take it away from the vicinity of the station. Mission Control Houston then confirmed that Dragon was on a safe path away from the complex, and SpaceX instructed Dragon to close its bay door approximately four hours after it left the station and begin to conduct its nine-minute-long deorbit burn. The Dragon capsule jettisoned its trunk and began to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Its heat shield protected it during most of re-entry, and when low enough in altitude, its two drogue parachutes were deployed, followed by its three main parachutes. The Dragon capsule splashed down into the Pacific Ocean about 900 kilometers from the Baja Peninsula and was recovered by a small fleet of recovery vessels. Soyuz TMA-03M undocked from the International Space Station on July 1, 2012, carrying Patet, Kononenko, and Kuipers, and landed safely in Kazakhstan the same day. The spacecraft's departure ended Expedition 31 and left astronauts Gennady Padalka, Sergei Revin, and Joseph Akaba aboard the station to begin Expedition 32. On July 15, 2012, 
Soyuz TMA-05M launched atop a Soyuz FG carrier rocket from Site-15 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Lift off of the Soyuz TMA-05M carrying Sonny Williams, Yuri Milenchenko, and Aki Hoshide on a two-day journey to the International Space Station. Reporting good first stage performance, the Soyuz delivering 102 tons of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It is currently burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of the flight. The um, engine chamber pressures are nominal. One minute into the flight, the teams are reporting that the chamber pressures inside the engines are all nominal. You see Yuri Malenchenko there on the left. After the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, Soyuz TMA-05M flawlessly docked with the Rosfiat module on July 17th. You can see the uh, core's automated rendezvous system, uh, the crosshairs of this engineering view, uh, just about perfectly aligned with the docking target on the Rosfiat module. Hello. This is normal, standing by for contact. Center, first here is the line. Right. Uh, contact confirmed. Capture confirmed. Docking confirmed. Okay. It is okay. How do you read me? Okay, okay let me know when to switch to another camera. Okay, I copy all. And there is the hatch opening. Okay, yes, that was the... Haki Hoshide returning to the International Space Station first to float in and be greeted by uh, the residents of the complex. Sonny Williams next. Something is pausing. Okay. I did not talk to you. Williams spent almost 200 days on board the International Space Station in 2006 and 2007, and there is the veteran Russian cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko floating into the Rosfiat module, being greeted by Revan Akaba and Padalka, all six crew members now together on... On July 21, 2012, the Japanese resupply vehicle Konotori, or HTV-3, launched aboard the H-2B rocket from Tanegashima Space Center. One. Ignition. And liftoff. Liftoff of the HTV-3 on its way toward the International Space Station. HTV-3 SRB burnout confirmed. And there goes the first set of solid rocket boosters. It'll be followed by the second set. Two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. The second pair is of SLBAs were jettisoned. After a week in orbit, Kanatori 3 slowly approached the station. When just 30 feet away from the station, Joseph Akaba operated the station's robotic arm and captured the ATV's gravel fixture and birthed it to the Harmony's nadir node. A new era of commercial resupply of the ISS was born. <laughs> 